Yeah, make a little noise that tells me that you started to record. So let's try in this orientation. Landscape, not portrait. And I hope you're not bored. I've experienced a little bit of what it's like to be homeless. And more recently, what it's like to not feel welcome. Or as though you have a place to call your own. And to constantly wondering where your next food's coming from. Water's not too difficult. I'd probably go up to someone's door and ask if they could refill my water bottle from the tap. I got used to having my own vehicle and going to collect spring water. That was lovely. And using my wages to buy organic vegetables. I'm still doing that. I don't have any wages. But if I do a little bit of work here and there for someone and they want to exchange that for some good food and any money that does come my way I literally have just phone credit once a month and the rest goes on emergency food as I call it organic oats, fruits and nuts, unsalted an avocado if I can afford it, some bananas I have some olive oil and some salt here. I'm just about to run myself a bath because I'm lucky. I'm one of the lucky ones. It's cold out there and it's quite miserable today. And instead of forcing myself outside to ground my feet, I'm going to do some energy work and I'm going to soak in the bath. And I'm going to rest this swollen finger and this sore ankle until I'm actually well enough to get out there and do stuff. But I've been lonely today. And I've got things to do, don't get me wrong. I'm trying to reach out to people in my family and hope that one day they'll accept that I do want to spend time with them. And it's not about anything else. It's not about money. It's not about what they've got that I need. But it's not easy to realize how numb you were because you were so sensitive and you experienced things when you were a child that you couldn't talk about with anyone like feeling energy in my hands and playing with it I didn't feel as though it was a good thing or a safe thing or the right thing to do to talk about that with anyone in my family now how do you think that makes me feel that I couldn't trust those that I thought were closest to me. I couldn't tell anyone in my family. I couldn't tell anyone at school. I couldn't tell anyone. So I forgot it all. And rather than be affected by how harsh this world's become, I closed myself down and I made myself numb. And I used drink and drugs to f cope with what I thought I was doing was the right thing, which was to do what was expected of me and what was expected of me. What I expected of me, based on what I was hearing from those around me, was that I got a job and a mortgage and a car. But those things stressed me out, so I just drank myself. I was hoping that it would dr I would drink myself to death, but I was never that extreme. The morning after a party or a social gathering, I would drink everything in sight. I'm not the sort of person who could have drink lying around like I am now. These bottles are showed slow gin within reach, but they're not mine. There's a bottle in the kitchen full of apple and quince wine. That is mine. I can drink as much of that as I like, but it's not that tasty. And now I like to enjoy the taste of the things that I enjoy. I like to enjoy a cup of coffee. I've stopped enjoying cigarettes because they're expensive and because the health benefits of not smoking outweigh the addiction. And 
now food's become an addiction. Sugar, other things, it's tricky. But I'm noticing more and I'm healing more and I'm feeling that I'm revealing more of who I was and who I can be and who I will be and who I am is someone who cares so much that I wish I could throw in, throw away the promises I've made about Christmas Day. But I'm going to be with my family because I said I would. I hope that I can make or find or give them some gifts, even if it's compliments. That doesn't matter. The day after I've made a promise to help a friend, it's doing something that's against my principles. It supports in some way fox hunting because I live in a hunting lodge and I live on an estate that hunts foxes. And yesterday I saw it get away. I was on my bike and right in front of me it ran straight up the street, straight across in front and it was miles ahead as usual as they usually are. I know more about these things than most people because I've lived here my whole life and this is getting quite long so I should cut this short because I've turned the hot water on and I've got a roast on. And yes, I'm kind of lonely, but it's been fun. I've been messing about with computers trying to fix one. I'm going to soak in the bath and rest and not force myself outside on a cold and slightly miserable day, even though it's been sunny at times and could have walked the dogs, but I've been told not to, probably. I don't know why. Let's not get into that. When we touch on stuff that's personal to me and my family or me and anyone who's important to me, then I try not to talk about it too deeply. This video is getting rather long and I'd like to do a journey one as well and get them both uploaded. But today I'm lucky. In a way, my friend's away. I've got access to her computer. Maybe I can fix the other one and get that on the internet too and then I have a proper keyboard and I can write to you, I can blog, I can write things up like my poetry and create a fourth book and maybe I'll just self print them myself, I'll just carry around a few copies because this trying to market them on Amazon and then knowing that this billionaire gets the money it's, it's depressing but if you'd like to support me paypal.me forward slash walkerjp123 patreon.com forward slash medicine man wild walks or just contact me and send me a bank transfer of some money to help me buy some decent organic food so that I can throw in and throw away nothing of the promises I've made but just disappear the day after Christmas Day and arrive in Manchester to help a homeless centre that's being set up in an old job centre and the lease said soon as mended but this is what I'm going to spend my life doing rebellion rebellious actions of loving intensity and intentions and healing in person or distance healing absent healing as some people call it. I'm not absent. I'm definitely there whether I'm physically in the room. I can feel you from here. I can tune in, I can tell you, I can give you a reading. Well, mediums are psychic but all, not all psychics are mediums. I grounded myself down until I thought that I was dust and then I became a living being again. Someone that I trust and there are aspects of me that I still haven't seen yet. I'm going to put myself in a cave and I'm going to go to India and I'm going to go to South America and I'm going to see the world before it's gone. And I'm going to bump into people and I'm going to do my best to be the best me that I can be for them, for you, for everyone I see. I love you. Enjoy your day. I didn't smile much, did I? I don't 
these days, unless it's real. Tell me how you feel. And if there's something I can do, I will pull out all the stops. I will pack up and leave. And I'll be wherever you are. This is what I'm telling you. It might take me a little time to get to you. But I'm coming. And I'm going to help you in any way I can. I love you. Right, now I'm going to run that back. Ah, oh, I'm so lucky.